Hi, uh, today I will be talking about Salmonella and Pericotyphi for the second time because Zoom didn't work for submission. <laughs> okay, um, so quick description, typhoid fever is a potentially fatal bacterial disease caused by Salmonella and Pericotyphi. It can cause weakness, stomach pain, headache, diarrhea, or constipation. Um, cough, and even loss of appetite. It's found in water contaminated by animal and human feces, and uh, this disease is a major issue in companies with, in countries with poor water quality. Okay, um, put in the presentation mode actually. <laughs> okay, next. Um, microbial traits. Uh, so it's got a rod, rod shape for the baculi. Um, it's got paratrichous flagellum, which just means it has a lot all over its, you know, capsule. Um, its capsule is made up of the eye antigen, and it tests gram negative. Bacteria does not form endospores either, and it can be found in bio waste and environmental materials. And the sewer systems, that's a, that's a pretty good example, that's, that's the notorious one. Alright, portal of entry, so oral, oral ingestion of fecally infected water and or food is the typical portal of entry used by Salmonella and Typhi. Um, yeah. Symptoms, okay, so typhoid fever can cause weakness, stomach pain, headache, diarrhea, or constipation, cough, and loss of appetite. Certain patients will develop rashes and spots, and um, this stage of it will last up to three weeks, assuming there are no complications. And while some people may just be done with it after that, um, some patients, um, the uh, disease will perforate the small intestine, and from there infect and inflame vital organs, such as pancreas, brain, and heart cause other problems such as pancreatitis and meningitis. These are symptoms, these symptoms are uh, potentially fatal. Yeah, what is what, yeah, that's what kills people. Um, so transmission almost solely contracted by consumption of contaminated food or water. Um, not, it's not typically transmitted from people or pets directly. Um, it, but it recycles a lot through sewer systems because it is um, excreted through the, all the diarrhea that it causes for like three weeks. And yeah, it's just get, it gets it back into the water system and infects someone else. It's a survival tactic for it. That's why it, you know, it takes two to three weeks to kill you or, you know, just leave you. All right. Moving on, so it is diagnosed um, using stool, blood, or bone marrow samples, and um, the body is recognized by TLRs, toll-like receptors, which, inactiv which activate the body's innate immune system. Doctor, so yeah. Um, treatment and prevention, all right. So um, antibiotics such as Cipro and Cithromax are the only effective treatment for typhoid fever. Um, it's prevented by by basic hygiene, you know, washing your hands before you eat, and making sure that the food and water you eat is safe for consumption. And if you go to a country where it's typhoid fever is prevalent, it may be a good idea to bring spice that can purify water or boil it, something else. All right, so here we have the range. It's um, most common in areas of the world with unsafe water and little to no sanitation. It's commonly found in Southeast Asia, and less so in Africa, South America, and the Caribbean. All right, and frequency. So typhoid fever reportedly affects 11 to 21 million people each year. That's a typo. Um, only 5,700 of which are in the United States. Most cases in the United States affect those who've recently traveled to countries of poor water quality. All right, now on to fun facts. So, 
Um, many antibiotics have worked very well in the past, no longer have an effect on Salmonella typhi today, so it's adapted to survive, survive a few different, yeah, antibiotics. So it's, it's, it's evolving. Um, the second one is basically what I was talking about, the sewer system, it re-enters the system and transmits to other humans. Um, humans are the only compatible host for Salmonella typhi, Be but it, you know it works for them because it, they're very good at infecting humans. Um, and yeah, they can survive within human cells as well as multiply, which is a tool that it uses to evade phagocytosis. It can invade macrophage cells as well, which allows it to survive the immune system for a long time. All right. So here's some pictures. So that's just the mass outbreak in the United States, I believe. Here are some of the pox that it causes. Um, there's a baby. That's it. Yeah, it causes the abdominal cramps, fever, vomiting. Yeah, you know, the abdominal cramps, that's just like a bellwether for your intestines being ripped up, ripped open. Maybe. <laughs> All right, so here are my sources. So I was playing the CDC and this YouTube video. Um, thank you.